Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be going over a question slash comment I have been getting asked over and over for a good while now. Is 8 gigabytes of VRAM really enough for the RTX 2080? This is a question slash comment I see in almost all videos regarding both the 2080 and the Radeon 7. It seems to be a point of argument, you could say, between both parties. I wasn't planning on making this video at all, since for the most part, to give you a very quick short answer, yes, for the most part, 8GB is enough VRAM for the 2080. This is especially true if you primarily play in 1440 and 1080p. There are, however, definitely games out there that utilize more than 8GB of VRAM the 2080 can provide. I actually accidentally stumbled across this issue trying to benchmark Resident Evil 2 at 4K with the 2080. I wasn't looking for it, but it became very obvious the card was having real bad stuttering issues in multiple areas across the game. It was at that point that I started doubting myself a little, and I figured I would run a few tests on the more VRAM demanding games I own, to see if I could replicate this stuttering issue on multiple different games. And the footage of some of those tests are playing on screen right now. In Resident Evil 2 running ultra settings in 4K, the RTX 2080 was definitely hitting a VRAM bottleneck in multiple areas. If you pay close attention to the footage, you can see when the VRAM utilization hits around 7.9 gigabytes and beyond, the card starts having some real nasty FPS drops down to the single digits shown by our 1% lows. In this particular game, using Shadowplay to record footage makes the issue even worse since it increases the VRAM allocation slightly. This issue is still present even without Shadowplay recording, however. On the bottom right hand corner of the screen, I posted similar clips showing the areas being ran by the Radeon 7. You will notice our frame times and 1% lows are significantly better than on the RTX 2080 since the VRAM allocation is nowhere near its limit. Now, one could argue that you can simply lower the texture quality in the settings to alleviate this issue, which would be true. Lowering some of the settings would prevent this issue, but at the same time you're having to compromise visuals in order to get the hardware to run properly. Sure, the image quality might not change drastically when lowering a few settings, but this can be an issue for those who want the absolute best textures possible. The next game I tested that gave me some issues was PUBG, without texture streaming. Removing texture streaming allows textures to load in an area at once. This helps remove stuttering and popping textures whenever you're getting closer to objects. I basically ran into the same issue I did with Resident Evil 2. The card would run fine until the VRAM allocation hit 7.9 gigabytes or higher. This would cause some consistent dips in performance. Just like in Resident Evil 2, this issue can be fixed by enabling texture streaming, but once again, you're limiting your options due to the hardware. At this point, I started to realize that memory allocation can in fact be rather close to actual usage in certain games. It seems like most people shrug off memory allocation thinking the card isn't consuming anywhere near what it's allocating, which can certainly be true, but in these few games I tested, certainly seem to paint a different picture. This issue is not as significant as in Resident Evil 2, since most players will likely play a competitive battle royale game like PUBG in 1080p or 1440p, but it's still worth mentioning. The last game I tested that gave me VRAM issues was Final Fantasy XV. This game was rather interesting since our VRAM was bottlenecking at 1440p, which actually surprised me quite a bit. This is also without the 4K resolution pack that was released. Just like the previous two games, once the GPU's VRAM started to hit close to 8GB, I would get the same stutters as before. Interesting enough, the card seemed to lower the VRAM allocation every time a stutter would occur. Not 100% sure why this is, but it certainly seems like the card was preventing any more textures into the VRAM. Once it detected, it was hitting its limit. 
Final Fantasy 15 is one of those type of games where you might want to install texture packs to get super high resolution textures for screenshots or sightseeing across the game. This can be a problem on the 2080 since I've seen this game allocate northwards of 11 gigabytes of VRAM on cards like the 2080 Ti. So to sum it all up, yes, 8GB is enough VRAM in most cases. If you're the type of player that only plays esports titles or enjoys extremely high refresh rates at lower resolutions, then the RTX 2080 will do perfectly fine. On the other hand, if you're the type of gamer that doesn't mind playing at 60fps with a few dips here and there into the 40s or 50s in order to get the absolute best visuals at 4K, or if you're the type of gamer who enjoys playing RPGs like Final Fantasy XV and likes taking screenshots here and there with extremely high textures, then the 2080 might disappoint you slightly. Maybe you enjoy modding Skyrim or adding crazy textures and mods to Grand Theft Auto V, then you might run into some issues on the 2080. It all boils down to preference. In most cases, the 2080 will do just fine in all departments. Now with that being said, will the VRAM pose a problem in the near future? Well, possibly, but not very likely. And that's pretty much all I have to say in regards to the VRAM on the 2080. It all really depends on what you want the car to do. For the most part, it will be fine. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace.